Hi everyone, it's John here from It's More Than Just Gaming.com, and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of something I recently got at the UK Games Expo. It is the Lone Wolf Adventure Game. Can you see that? I hope so. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of background, the Lone Wolf series of books was a, a sort of like a fighting fantasy, choose your own adventure thing, but not made by fighting fantasy. Um, I remember playing it back in the 1980s uh, once or twice. Um, admittedly, I cheated, um, but that's what you did with those kind of books when you got fed up with them. Um, the story was really fantastic. You got to play something called the Kai Lord, which was basically a superhuman in, in like a medieval fantasy setting. And when I saw that there had been a roleplay game produced and it was on sale at the UK Games Expo, I decided to get it. So let's have a look and see what's what's in the box. Well, actually, let's look at the box first. That's gorgeous artwork there. <clears throat> so you can see three of the uh, three Kai Lords on the front there, going on their adventure, investigating a tunnel or something like that. Um, on the back, got a little bit of information about the game and the contents of the box because it's more than just a game book. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here as well. I had a quick peek earlier, uh, just to give me a little bit of advance warning about what I'm going to find, so that I can actually. Um, deal with it without having to be surprised. Actually, one of the things about the, the Lone Wolf books was they had a random number table on the in the book rather than using dice, which the fighting fantasy books did. The idea was you sort of like close your eyes and you poked at the random number table with a pencil and that's the number you got when you were supposed to be rolling the dice or something like that. In this game, the inside of the box lids both have uh, random numbers, one to nine, and when players have to do a test, they sort of like flip a token, and where the token points, that's what your number is. So that's quite cool. There is a very helpful get ready for the greatest adventure of your lives, read this first book. I had a quick read of it earlier, um, and it basically outlines the world, what Kai Lords are, uh, because, to be fair, I'd forgotten about Lone Wolf books until I saw this and actually needed a refresher. Um, it tells you what's in the box, so it tells you that you've got the book of Kai Legends and Training and Wisdom and ready-made action charts. Um, the roles that players play in the game, so for instance the players and the narrator, so your characters and your dungeon master. And it also gives you um, a list of the tokens that are in the box as well, but we'll get to that in due time. So, let's see, what else do we have? We have six pre-made Kai Lords. Um, so this one here is called True Song. Can you see that? Yes, you can. I'll scan these in and I'll pop them on the blog later, uh, or at least I'll scan one of them in uh, so that you get an idea of what one of the pre-made characters looks like. Um, you'll need to buy the box for the rest of that, I would suggest. Um, you get two versions of the character sheet. You get the, the you get the sort of like the picture of the character here. So True Song, you get who is True Song. Uh, as True Song, you will play a keen and dedicated Kai Connor, inquisitive and curious about the world around you. You are most at home with your nose in a book, but are easily able to put this knowledge to good use in the outside world against the agents of darkness. In her own words, noble birth brought with its benefits of education, but I happily have stopped my studies after learning to read. I discovered literacy at the age of four and have never looked back since. I don't remember my first ride to the Kai Monastery as a child because I never once looked up from the copy of the history of the House of Ulnar. There are excellent facilities at the monastery, but all I really care about is its library. This focus on books, everything from historical treatise to the latest advances in medicine and metallurgy has cost me physically. While I'm well trained, I like the speed and strength of many of my fellows in the order. I work hard to make up for this helping others out where I can. I do tend to spend most of my time in combat training, hiding behind my shield, but I'm very good at tending to the wounded. My dedication to the truth and honour is inspiring to others, while this devotion originally came from the storybook characters I idolised as a child. It has become a part of me now. Slowly, without even trying, I'm becoming a heroine in my own right. Why play True Song? True Song's great because, with both tracking and sixth sense, very little stands a chance of hiding from her. She is both a shield and a helmet, giving her good armour protection in combat. Her traits and skills make her a brilliant detective. Um, her disciplines, she has healing, sixth sense, camouflage, mind shield and tracking. Um, she has a mace for a weapon. 
and yeah that's cool so that's true song i'm not going to read out all of them because that would be a little bit tedious for you i'm just going to go through uh what they all look like so here we have bright shield who i'm imagining is something of a paladin i'm not going to go through the description why play bright shield bright shield is great because bright shield is a, has the mind blast and mind shield kai disciplines making him well versed in psychic combat Awesome. With both shield and chainmail waistcoat, he is tough and hardy in combat. He has the commanding trait, making him a natural leader in combat. Awesome. His superpowers. Mind Blast, Mind Over Matto, which is basically telekinesis. Uh, animal Kinship, he can talk to animals. That's cool. Anyone who's ever read my uh, Mycroft journals knows that my character talks to animals all the time. But that's what you had to do in the Dark Ages or medieval setting before mobile phones existed. I had to send an owl. Uh, he has hunting, which means he never goes hunting, hungry in the wild. And he has mind shield, which allows to protect himself from mental damage. That's cool. Who have we got next? Dawn Thunder. Yep, you see that? Okay, cool. Dawn Thunder. Dawn Thunder is great. With healing, mind shield, and sixth sense, Kai disciplines, he is a great. He is great at protecting himself and others from harm. So you're tank or uh, paladin. He carries a potion of Lom Spur, allowing him to provide vital support in battle if needed. With his extra skill of Sage, he is potentially the smartest Kai Lord in the group. Okay. So already I'm seeing sort of like your fighter, your cleric, um, possibly even a bard in there. The next one, Night Fox, looks like he's a bit of a ranger because he's holding a bow. Night Fox is great because his combat skill of 19 is the highest of all the Kai Lord characters. He is incredibly agile and stealthy, possessing the Kai disciplines of tracking, hunting, and camouflage. He has three points of Kai favor, making it far easier for him to succeed when it really counts. I think that basically means he's really lucky. Weapon skill. Great skill with a bow. That's one of his special powers. Tracking, follow and read tracks, hunting, never go hungry in the wild. Camouflage, hiding in disguise, mind over matter, you can move small objects. Uh, yeah, I can see why all of that would be quite useful for a ranger type character. Uh, Moonblade, who's Moonblade is next. Moonblade is great because equipped with a helmet and chainmail waistcoat, he can take a lot of damage in combat. His combination of the Sixth Sense, Mind Blast, and Mind Shield disciplines gives him a formidable trio of psychic powers to use against his enemies. His ambidextrous trait allows him to add plus three to his combat skill. Nice. And the final preem weight is Storm Sparrow. That's a cool name, actually. I really like that. Looks like a huntress of some description. Storm Sparrow is... Gr okay, there's a misprint here. Storm Sparrows is great. Yeah, that's a misprint. Uh, Storm Sparrow is great because with Kai disciplines of hunting, tracking, and animal kinship, she excels in wilderness situations. She carries both a melee and a ranged weapon, enabling her to fight at any range. Her wild bond trait provides an animal companion, a trusted friend to have by her side on her adventures. Okay, so basically, when you buy the, the core set, uh, you get those six pre-made characters, which look like they're quite well balanced. And they have two variant character sheets. And um, we'll use Storm Sparrow, actually. If you open it up, you've got basic character sheet and rules on the inside on how to play. But if you reverse it, once you have done your first adventure and are getting a little bit better versed in the game, there's a second version of the character sheet which um, uses more of the rules, apparently. I've not had a chance to look at that yet. Okay. Inside the box, there are three books. Um, I had a quick peek at them when I was at the expo, and I've had a quick peek at them this uh, today as well. The first book is the Book of Kai Legends. Um, oh, sorry, getting glare there. Lone Wolf, book, book of Kai Legends. It looks awesome on the outside. This is basically your storyteller's handbook. It's It's got... Um, a how to use this book chapter, and it's got two uh, ready-made adventures for you to play. Uh, the Lost Caravan Adventure is, by the looks of things, supposed to be a sort of like an introductory how to play the game adventure. Um, I'm thinking about offering to run that at my games club for some of my friends there, uh, because our D&D is coming to an end. And truth be told, I've never done an out-of-the-box adventure before, and I want to know 
how much fun they are, uh, because I do have a few more for likes of Vampire and um, Curse of Strahd for D&D 5th edition went onto my Amazon wish list last week, although I'll need to get the Dungeon Master Guide and the Monsters Guide as well, but meh. Nah. Yeah, so you've got the, the Book of Kai Legends, so you've got, uh, like I say, there's four chapters in this. The Introduction, uh, which describes how to use the book, getting started, and how to play the adventures. Then you've got the Lost Caravan Adventure, uh, Onwards to Morning Adventure, which is significant, well, quite a bit longer in the book. And then there's Chapter 4, is Creating Your Own Stories. Um, let's see... I don't want to actually show too much here because actually if you end up playing this then it might potentially spoil it. Um, there's some there's some really nice artwork in here actually. Let's have a wee look at this. That's gorgeous. Love that. So yeah, you get the Book of Kai Legends which is basically your storyteller's handbook. And if there's a storyteller's handbook, naturally you're going to need to have the player's handbook, which is the Book of Kai Training. Again, sorry about the glare, can't help that. I'm living a block of flats and I get sun all through the day. Um, this is basically your expanded rules for all of the different powers that your Kai Lords have. Um, you, as, as of this box, you can only play as Kai Lords by the looks of things. Um, let's see, what's in this book? Chapter 1 Introduction, Welcome to the Game, How to Play the Game, Some Examples, How to Use the Random Number Tables. Chapter 2 uh, is a little bit about what Kai Lords are and the history of the Kai and a little bit of their philosophy, their history. And then there's creating your own characters because whilst you have six pre-mades in the box, there are character sheets in there for making your own Kai Lords as well, which is quite cool. And then... Uh, you have the Kai Disciplines, which are basically your supernatural abilities. So, actually, let's skip ahead to the Kai Disciplines, because that's going to be cool. Um, and let's have a look at some of the Kai Disciplines that perhaps weren't mentioned on any of the pre-mades. Actually, I think, looking at this, all of them were used in the pre-mades. Fair enough. There's bound to be more in supplementary books, and I did see there were a couple of supplementary books at the con. One of them was for making wizard characters, and I think there were other adventure books. If I end up enjoying this, I might get a couple more supplements, but at the minute, I just like the idea of having an out-of-the-box adventure. Uh, the final book in the box that you get is the Book of Kai Wisdom, which is basically um, everything else you need to know, and it's advised that you basically read this after you've done your first adventure, to give you a little bit of context. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. What else do we have in here? Just to give you an idea. Right. Kai Wisdom. Being the narrator, playing the game, narrator characters. So basically how to be a storyteller, how to play the game, chance and random numbers, dealing with the different circumstances like poison, disease, fire and ice, drowning, suffocation. Nice. Kai Disciplines and Tests. Um, very detailed uh, chapter on combat, a detailed chapter on equipment, um, character advancement, okay. So yes, it's, um, I, I wondered about that actually because um, I'd not encountered on how you level up in this game, so that's in this book. Then there's Friends and Foes. Chapter 6, and this is uh, Friends and Foes, so you've got a little bit of a bestiary in here of the various things that you can actually encounter, like the Anti-Wasp, Bandits and their leader, Bears, Burrow Crawler, Crypt Spawn, Doom Wolf, Drakkar, Drakkar Captain, a Mountain Jayak, Gurgas, Guards, Hellgasts, Crans, Zols, Thugs, Vordax, Warhounds, Slan Beasts, and Companions. And then there is a little bit of a history of Magnamund, which I think is the continent that you're based on. Uh, Kai Lords, I think, are based in the Kingdom of Summerland, if I recall. Um, certainly Summerland's in here, and it's so that it would make sense that my... Well, that what was it called? What did they call it? Magna something. Magnamund. Yes, it makes sense that Magnamund would be the... Um, the continent. Okay, we have an advert. Um, this is for Cubicle 7, the One Ring role-playing game. Awesome. 
Um, Hobbit Tales from the Green Dragon Inn. Okay, a Doctor Who role playing game. Yeah, Cubicle 7, um, which is www.cubicle7, and that's 7 the number, .co.uk um, for um, their website. That's uh, who produces the Lone Wolf game, and I might be visiting that website later to see what else is available if I like the startup adventure. What else do we have? We have a combat results table. Um, a cheat sheet on how to resolve basic combat, um, an equipment list which has armour and costs, uh, also how much a horse costs, a quiver, um, nice, everything an adventurer needs. Um, we have a map for uh, the Kingdom of Summerland which is quite a nice map. Um, this I will also scan for the blog. Um, if you have just stumbled on this video, uh, then you can find a link to the blog in the description of the video, um, which will probably have a few more bits and bobs uh, that I've thought after I finish recording. Uh, there are blank character sheets. There are a finite number of blank character sheets, so I would probably save these and just scan them and print off new print off new character sheets. There are. There are quite a few of them, but uh, and they're quite high quality. Uh, but I, like I say, I would actually scan them. There are a lot of tokens. So there's luck token, which on the other side is the bad luck token. Um, at the top, you've got your different Kylord tokens. Um, these are the things that you actually flip onto the random number table, and you'll see that there's an arrow at the bottom where the arrow points. Um, that's where the random number is. Um, the narrator has similar tokens at the bottom. They all have skulls, but they're different colours. And there is Kai's favour tokens. Not quite sure how that mechanic works yet, because I've not read through the entire rulebook. Oh! And then there's a piece of cardboard, which you get for free. Um, yep. And another random number table. So, actually, that's quite a lot of stuff, quite well packed into the box, and aside from pencils and maybe uh, rubbers and a bit of scrap paper, everything you can actually need um, fits quite compactly back into the box. Um, you don't need dice. You could probably get away without scrap paper, but... Um, I tend to prefer to have it anyway, um, just in case, so that I don't need to scribble on anything that looks nice. So, that is a complete unboxing of the Lone Wolf Adventure Game. Um, I'll let you know how our first adventure goes. Thanks for watching. Bye now.